All right. This was the autonomic testing battery that we'll be demonstrating here. Just a few words about the thermoregulatory sweat test. This is a test we utilize at our institution extensively, about 2,000 tests a year, uh, because we find it that helpful. Uh, it is a very labor-intensive test, however, um, costly test, um, and uh, uh, some really more reserved for, for uh, centers that have a special interest in autonomic nervous system. But nevertheless, I want to demonstrate how uh, helpful this test can be. So uh, what we do is we have the patient uh, lying um, and uh, put indicator powder on the skin, really from head to toe, the entire anterior body surface is covered. And then we put the patient in the heating chamber and heat the patient up so the body core temperature rises. And uh, we look at the pattern of sweat recruitment throughout the entire body, not just at the four sites that we are able to test with QSART, but the entire body surface. And uh, by doing so, we will see progressively uh, changing in color, and, and you see where the patient sweats and does not. This patient happened to have a limited autonomic ganglionopathy that we have probably never picked up uh, without having that test available. So this is a test that was also implemented some, implemented some 30 years ago. Um, uh, Robert Feely was a, was a key developer of that test along with Philip Lowe. And uh, it is really a way to assess not only the postganglionic pseudomotor neuron like the QSAR does, but really to assess the pseudomotor pathway from the hypothalamus all the way to the sweat gland. That needs to be intact. If there's a lesion anywhere along the way, you'll have an abnormality. So it's very sensitive. Um, the way it's performed, I'm showing you here our, our sort of temperature settings and, and humidity settings. Um, we keep a close eye on skin temperature for safety reasons, obviously. Yeah. And um, we want to raise the core temperature by a certain amount in order to have an adequate stimulus. And a number of studies have shown that you need to reach a body core temperature of at least 38 degrees Celsius uh, and at least a one degree Celsius increment in order to have an adequate stimulus. Uh, the powder we use is uh, alizarin red mixed with cornstarch and uh, desiccant sodium carbonate. This is what our sweat chamber, or one of our sweat chambers looks like. Um, so it's kept, kept quite open. There's just a, a, a curtain here that, that keeps the humidity and the, and the temperature in, and so claustrophobic patients usually have no problems getting through it. Um, <coughs> Here are some examples of normal. This is a, a diffuse, heavy sweating pattern, as we see typically in males. Uh, females tend to have lighter sweating patterns. Those are shown here. Uh, those are normal variants. Um, here are some patterns of abnormality. A uh, patient with a length-dependent pattern, a um, little bit of hands, uh, legs and feet involved. This is a patient with segmental pattern sweat loss. You see that sometimes in uh, pure autonomic failure, sometimes in multiple system atrophy, but also in certain ganglionopathies. So this is a patient with distal sweat loss in the feet and also uh, demarcated areas about the abdomen. These are diabetic radiculopathies and, and length-dependent peripheral neuropathy. This is a patient with global anhydrosis. This is a normal control. And this is a, um, a regional pattern sweat loss, as you can, for example, see in multiple system atrophy. Um, Interestingly, those, all those six here were diabetics. Now, another example of a few examples here of a normal pattern, a distal small fiber neuropathy pattern, and a global anhydrosis pattern with a little bit preserved sweating in hands and feet. That's very classic for multiple system atrophy. And multiple system atrophy is really where this test comes in so very handy and is, is, is precious uh, for, for, for detecting that condition and confirming that condition. Because this is really one of the only conditions where you see uh, impaired central pathways with completely normal peripheral pathways. So if you do a QSART where you really just test the axon reflex, you have completely normal responses. Yet when you put this patient in the heating chamber and have a central stimulus applied that requires the central pathways to be intact, they can be globally anhydrotic. Uh, and this pattern in someone with Parkinsonism is, is diagnostic of MSA.